Welcome to GIS Gallery. In today's tutorial, I'll guide you through the process of watershed delineation using DEM data in QGIS. We'll be using Aster DEM data to delineate watershed basins and analyze the flow of water across the terrain. This method is crucial for hydrological studies, land management, and environmental planning. Let's dive into the steps and tools you'll need to successfully delineate watersheds in QGIS. Let's get started. So hey guys, so today we'll be seeing how we can do watershed delineation in QGIS, okay? So we have seen how to do it in IGIS, but it's a little bit different here, and we need to install a plugin for doing this first. So if we go to plugins, manage and install plugins, and then we'll have to search for a plugin called this one, okay? Saga next gen provider. So we just need to go to all and search for Saga and then we'll have this plugin here. Okay. Processing Saga next gen provider. So this will be having most of the tools that you need for doing this watershed delineation in QGIS. Well, so after you've done that, we'll first load the dump data that you have. So I have done loaded my dump data. And then first of all, we will check the properties here. You can see that it's in the coordinate system of WGS84. So first, I need to project it to UTM. I mean, project it on a system which is UTM. So I'll come out to raster. And then I'll have uh, yeah, projections. I'll have work, which is reproject. I click on that. And my input layer is the dump data, and then the target CRS will be WGS84 UTM zone 43 node, and then my node data values will be 0. And then I can save the file. So I'll be save the file. And then choose the location where I want to save the file. So I'll just go over to my location. And then I'll be saving my projected file here. I'll give the name, click save, and run. Once completed, I can see that my projected the details here. Now, after it's been projected, just as in RPS, first, what I need to do is I need to fill the dump, either fill, fill, store. So, first, if you have memory, the two box will have this here, and you can search for fill things, and then in the tag on oxygen tools, we'll have something called fill things one and layer. Okay, this one. So click on that. Will be converting your projected dump data, and then make sure you tick off all these things because we don't need watershed basins and flood erosion. We just need the full dump data. Okay, you could also save to a file, and then you could give the name build dump here. And then I click on save and then run. We'll be taking a bit of time to load. As you can see, it's running. I'll just turn off my dump and then you can see my fill dump. So I'll be using this for the further of my processes that I'll be doing. So this is why it will be changing a bit different as from RGIS. In RGIS, we used to do flow direction and flow conversion, right? 
but in this method in QJS, what we will be doing next is we will be directly uh, calculating the straggler order. So if you go to toolbox, you can search for straggler order. It will be in Saigon accident, error analysis channels. The straggler order tools will be there. Click on the straggler order tools. Click on elevation. It will be giving the uh, fill done better. Okay. And then straggler order, I can give and save a name. Okay. I click on save and then I will run it here. Click close now. Now, as you can see, it has calculated the styler orders from 1 to 10. So, if you remember, styler order is just the stream orders, right? So, I have the stream orders from 1 to 10. Okay, but then it will be calculating most even smaller stream orders. So, what, what, so now what I'll do is I'll only need stream orders that is greater than 4 or 5 or 5 or 6. Because I have 10 stream orders here. So, what I'll do is I'll go to raster calculator and extract only the stream orders that are greater than 5 or 6. So, I'll just come to raster, raster calculator. And then I have the power order. I'll be setting my equation is greater than or equal to uh, a 5. Okay. And then I'll be changing my location as in. This name, this name, okay, and then file format will be geotip. So make sure file order is equal to file, click OK, and then says calculating raster expression in the random year. But now, as you can see, it's a bit not visible, right? So, I can go to the properties and change the symbology here. So, I will go to render type ID, unique values, and then it is classified. Okay. And for the one, I will be giving a color. This blue. And for the zero, I'll be doing something of y. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll come out to transparency, transparency, and then I'll set zero as a additional no data value. Okay. So I'll set this in more and transparency and if I click OK. Now you can see so I'll just turn on my filter. And it's much better for, for you to visible, right? So you have created frames from here. Now what you can do is now you have the streams as a raster file here. So you can convert these frames into a vector file. So that similarly come out your tools and then search for channel vector and drainage. Yeah, so in the saga file analysis will have channel network and drainage basins. So on that for elevation it will be giving a fill done better. Okay. And then threshold is 5 because I have 
given the scalar order of greater than five, right? So let it be five here, and then I don't need the subdivision, I don't need the flow direction, I don't need the flow connectivity, I don't need the scalar order, I don't need the drainage basin, I need the channel. So I'll be saying this files and give the name here. And I don't need the drainage basin, I don't need junctions. Okay. Now, if I click run, it's been loading. Okay, it's been loaded. If we close it, you can see that it just creating the channel network. Okay, now from this, we can find out which whatever I need to find out the port point, right? So I need to find to which channel I want to find the drainage basin. Okay. So I will just be coming over and creating a basin for this one. Okay. For that, what you need to do is you can come over here and the pixel are right. You need to right click and then copy the coordinates. Okay. So then right click the pixel, copy the coordinates for where you want the port point. So instead of now, JS, we are we were creating a point data. In here, we will just uh, copying the coordinates from here. Okay. Now what you need to do is the tools you can search for upslope area. Well, upslope area in terrain analysis hydrology. Click on upslope area, and then it's the target area. We're not giving anything. The target x coordinate will place in our x. Value and we'll cut the y from there and then we'll place the y value here. All right, and for the elevation, I'll be setting it as my fill done. Okay, and then the method will be deterministic. Right? If you remember from our JS classes, this deterministic gate was a method for the flow direction, right? So, in here, we'll be setting deterministic gate. And then I'll just be running again now. So you can save it as a file. So now I'll be just be running it. So now we come over here, you can see a raster watershed has been created. Now what we can do is we can convert it into a program feature. So then we just need to come to raster, conversion, and click on polygonals. Okay, raster to vector. Click on it, we'll be selecting my upslope area. And then I'll be setting my Output location. I can just save the file and just say uh, something like watershed. Click save. Run. And now you can see it has been converted to vector file. I'll just turn off everything. Now what I need to do is I need to clip the whatever the streams that they have inside its watershed. For that we know we can go to vector the processing tools. You can clip 
input layer will be the channels and overlay layer will be the watershed. I can use yeah, it will be and then random. It has been clicked. And now you have your watershed and then channels. So I have my watershed and my strains in here. Okay. So this is how you can do watershed delineation in QGIS and RMA.